All right, so now let's move on to Affinity Designer. And uh, we'll go over the interface on that. Uh, a lot of the things are going to be pretty much the same in Designer in if, as they were in Publisher. So I'm, this is going to go a lot quicker. Um, I will probably often say that's the same as Publisher. Go watch the Publisher video. Um, so we can kind of streamline this. So if you jumped in to Designer and you haven't watched the interface overview for Publisher, you probably want to watch it anyways, even if you prefer Designer. Um, and the same goes for Photo when I get to the video that's coming after this one. So, but let's get started. So I have, again, I've launched um, Designer here, and uh, by default you should land on the, um, I guess they call it the new, it launches, a, if it doesn't pop up, if you've already been playing, chances are it will, but if you unticked a show on startup, you might not see it. So if it's missing, just go to File and um, New. You want New up here. Or you could do a shortcut of Control-N if you're into shortcuts, but uh, you want to do New. And you'll land on this. It might, just as I said in the Publisher uh, overview, it might be on one of these other tabs. I'm just starting on Account. That seems the logical place. Um, Again, if you don't know what version you're on, obviously it says Designer 2, but if you want to know more, as of the time of recording this video, we're at version 2.04, build number 1701. And so that might be different when you open up your designer. You'll see the same thing in Publisher and Photo, um, but you can see what build number you're on. And uh, if there's an update, as soon as you open the app, try to get to this screen here, it'll tell you there's a an update and ask you if you want to install it then or wait later. So I always try to keep mine up to date. As soon as they have an update, I go ahead and install it straight away. I figure they're fixing bugs or giving me something new to play with, so I'm all in and I install things right away. Um, and just as I said in the last uh, tutorial for publisher. These are everything that I've bought through Serif's own store for Affinity. It's in my Affinity account on their website. So, and I own almost everything since they had that really great sale during the pandemic. Um, not everything, but most things. Uh, you can always browse their store. They've got a convenient little button here. I'd wait till they have a good sale going on. The time of the recording, they were only promoting upgrading to version 2 from 1.10. So there wasn't any sales going on for the add-ons. But when they do run a sale, especially if it's like 50% off, which I don't know how often they'll do that. Usually it's like 35% off. Um, but look for sales and buy a couple things. I didn't buy them all at once. I gradually accumulated them over the last two years. It's two years, two and a half years, something like that. So that's that. You'll only see these things matching between things if you um, are on version two and you're doing everything through the universal license. So, um, so that's that. Anything else you want to know on that, refer to the publisher overview because it'll be the same. Then we have new. A lot of this is going to be the same as Publisher. The only real difference here is your uh, categories might be a little different, um, but they do bring them in from other places. Actually, since I just did the other one, if you watch that already, uh, you can see because of my um, universal license and all the linking, uh, Publisher's already picked up my demo category and my demo layout. So it is linking it that way. The only thing that's particularly different in Designer is you're not working in spreads like you would with a book or a magazine or something that has multiple pages. Uh, you're working with artboards. So instead of it asking about facing pages, it's going to ask if you want to create an artboard. I, I would definitely 
be creating artboards. That's like the best thing ever. So, and it's there by default. Um, you can think about what you're using designer for. If it's just going to be something that's going to be displayed on a computer screen, like you're making mock-ups to put on your Etsy store, on Pinterest, your website, the wherever, you probably want to just leave it as RGB. But if you are trying to do something that might be printed out on paper or on fabric or something along that line, it's going to be printed with ink, you, I would recommend going to CMYK. And I went into a nice deep dive on that in the publisher overview, so I'm not going to repeat that. Just find that in the publisher one, and um, you've got my two cents on it. Or well, like a lot of pennies on that one. So anyways, I went over all of that and the other. Um, this time for this demo, I'll leave it as RGB. Uh, margins, there for reference. They're kind of, I don't know, they seem more important in Publisher, but uh, you might very well want to use them in Designer as well, and also in Photo. Uh, they're just references. They don't get printed out. They don't get saved when you export. They're just there for guides, and you can always set them up after the fact if you don't do it right here in the um, uh, in the setup to create the file you're going to work on. Same goes for bleed and scaling. This is actually uh, I don't know if this is new or not. They've added a lot of things in Designer for version two because now they support opening CAD files and. Um, CAD files and other similar type things use a lot of scaling and, and measuring tools and stuff. And so there's a bunch of new things in Designer that has to, all to do with doing drawing. Drawing, whether you're doing architectural plans or creating sewing patterns or things like that, where measuring tools and knowing the you know area or the surface area of something, there's a ton of new things in in designer too that weren't in the previous version so um, but I think this might have been in the last version I haven't really got into um, using it but it could be very handy especially as I do more and more things around doing um, surface design to perhaps perhaps be printed on fabric like at Spoonflower this kind of scaling could be very useful but that's where you would set it up if you wanted to do it before you open the file. Um, and only other things to really pay attention to when you're starting to create a file is if you want to do embedded images. And that's if you're a beginner, I recommend you embed. Embedded images uh, can make your file humongous, um, especially if you're working over in photo or a publisher. Uh, so as you build more skills, I do recommend that you learn how to do linked because it'll make your files way smaller, but there's some tricky things about that. So it's not a beginner thing to do linked. Um, you have to be careful about where you have your images and all sorts of things. I'll go over that in a totally different training, um, but it is something to pay attention to when you're opening it to check whether you've got the right image placement option, um, your document units, since we're doing artboards, and that's often thought of as being mockups, things of that nature, you might want to be in pixels, because if you're doing things for um, thumbnails and so on, uh, you probably are going to look up like what is the dimensions for an Instagram story post and they're going to give it to you in pixels and so you want to do it that way um, but you can also set things up to be inches say i wanted turns out by the way if you flip between these pixels so 300 pixels if you just switch it to inches 300 uh, 3000 pixels is actually the equivalent of 10 inches so if you ever have to do math and if i wanted to know what it was in millimeters it's 254 millimeters, so 10 inches is 250 millimeters. 254 millimeters is 10 inches. 
as is the same as 3000 pixels. Just a handy thing if you're trying to figure that out. Um, but we'll probably leave it at that. But you know, you can go th do go through the publisher overview so you can understand how to move categories, how to add categories, how to create presets, categories, rename them, delete them, what it means to favorite them with the heart, and whatever else I covered. Because everything I did in the overview for Publisher is identical to doing it here in Designer. So I'm not even going to repeat that part. Um, I think for the, my demo, I'll leave it at 3,000. That's a fairly large, you know, it's 10 inches by 10 inches, so it's fairly large. I'll leave it at 300 DPI. And of course, I want to create artboards. Um, before I hit create these things here again, if I hit open, it's just going to open up um, whatever last folder I was in. And since we're in um, Designer, it can open straight up uh, different image files as well. So you can uh, you might find that you see a few more things in Designer. Although I think Publisher can probably open them too. Uh, probably when I hit open, I probably had gone into a folder that I wasn't in before. Anyways, but that's what that does. You go to open to get to where you want. New is where you create something new. Recent is wherever you last were in regards to designer. So um, this is the last things I did in designer. Sometimes you'll see them repeated because files can be opened. You know, an AF design file, meaning it's for designer. An AF design file can be opened by publisher and it can be opened by photo. If it's AF template, you know, it's not really designated to one of the apps or the other. Um, but they can, each of the apps can read each other's files. There'll be nuances like artboards are interpreted different by photo, which can't create artboards. And publisher can't create artboards, but it'll convert artboards to pages. Um, so, but they all know how to read each other's files. So, which is one of the, my favorite things about it so but again you can put it here into a list format and you can pin things so I might maybe I'll pin that one and then it shows it pinned so um, templates same thing add folders for your shortcut um, it looks like my shortcuts are different here than they were in publisher so we probably should go add that folder there because that's where i'm putting things so um i have other things shortcutted here so but that's how you add that and then they have their own samples that are different than publisher go over to their youtube channel they uh serif does have a youtube channel one for like the whole affinity app suite and then they've got separate channels, one for publisher, one for photo, one for designer. And they'll have tutorials where they use these demo files so you can download them, play with them, and follow along with the tutorial. So do, do go over, subscribe to all of their channels, and I don't know, maybe you want to call them sub-channels, and check out what they have there. Um, but let's go back to where I queued this up, and let's create it. So um, this automatically put a ruler around it. And um, because I picked pixels, it's got it in pixels. If you choose a different measuring option, you'll get different measurements. So um, just like in Publisher, these are your studio panels. They're, some of them are the same and some of them are different. They'll look kind of like the same as when you're in Publisher, but on closer inspection, You'll notice that even though we have color and we have swatches and we have stroke, we didn't have appearance. That one wasn't in Publisher. Down here we had layers, oh, but now we have brushes. And here's quick effects, which I added before. It wasn't automatically in Publisher. Um, I don't know why they don't put it as a default, but hey, it is over here. Um, 
and styles, which doesn't exist in publisher. I always, I, it might be a studio panel that's not there. And then we have transform, navigator, history. Um, same thing as before. Your tools are down here. They look similar. Some of them are identical, and some of them are publisher tools. You know, we've got the move tool and the view tool and the zoom tool, but then we have an artboard tool, so you can create more artboards. Then we've got our text features, and you know, some of them look the same. Here's shapes. This one's just going with triangle, but you've got all the shapes. You can add that cat shape. Um, although what I found over in Publisher is if you're going to add the cat to your toolbar, it has to be by itself. I, I couldn't find a way to get the cat to show in the flyout menu, which is what I wanted. So you can add the cat. Um, we'll go look and see about adding tools to see if, what else is in there because they're different in designer. But uh, yeah, so I think the cat has to be its own standalone. You can't get it into the flyout menu. Which I would like it in there. Um, and then there's all these nifty tools, which we will be going over in trainings on how to use things. There's a lot of measuring things that got added in version 2 for CAD and uh, similar type of apps that, we, that Affinity now supports that they didn't before. So if you're into doing architectural drawings or you're a, a pattern maker, you like to sew and create sewing patterns, uh, this is going to be awesome for you guys. So, um, But these are all the, these are tools up and down here. Some are the same, some are different. Um, and we can customize that. Each time you click on one of these, you'll find that your context toolbar at the top here will change. You'll get different things along there. Sometimes the one above it um, also changes, but mostly we're looking at the one in the you know, slightly darker gray. Um, hand tool, zoom tool, you can see it just changes different things up there. That one doesn't show any because there's nothing selected to crop. So you're back to crop tool. Um, if we were to do triangles, we get different things. So just know that that changes and um and oftentimes there's more than one way to get to something so like right now i'm on this and it's got some things about stroke and fill so to a certain extent you can also do that over here um, some things will be the same function in both places and sometimes it's a a slight nuance of difference but um, it, it won't be so different that you'll be like, what? Totally confused. You'll figure it out. Um, so those are your tools. There's your context toolbar, studio panels, menu options. Get familiar with what's in each of the menus. Um, if you were on version 110, there are some slight differences, like all the studio panels are now under window. They used to be you'd have to go to view and then there'd be something that said studio panels and then it would have a flyout sub menu and then you'd go find it. But now they just made it easier by putting them under window. And this is the sum total of all the studio panels for designer and some ones that are categorized under text. So you've got the text ones there and that looks like the only one with a little sub menu here. So you can um, have them all there and um, there was one thing I forgot to show in Publisher, which was how to save a setup, because you can go into Studio and you can save. Um, but let's change some things so you know why you're saving it. So this right now, as far as I know, is the default or as close to the default as I could get it. Factory defaulted. It doesn't factory default my toolbar, but I don't think I've changed that one yet. It doesn't look like it I'm not sure um, but it did default where all my studio panels are at least so this is what you should see when you launch it yourself for the first time and probably still looks that way unless you've already been changing things around so I'm going to show you what I tend to use in designer and um, you know I may change it at times for different trainings but I'm going to get it close enough 
And if you're watching a tutorial and it wasn't there when I did this um, video recording, then that's just, you'll know how to do it. You'll have, know where to go get the studio, put it in, and even how to save it. So I do like to have color there and followed by swatches and stroke. Appearance, I may use it at times, but I'm not going to use it. So just like I explained, you just grab the tab, hold the mouse button down, drag it out onto the desktop, close it away. You can always go get it again if you're like, oop, shouldn't have closed it. And it's right there. Um, and if I were to click on it, it would just pop back up. And I can close it again. Um, layers. I, even in designer, I like having my layers over here. Drag it over, wait till it turns blue, let it go. It drops it over there. I want my layers over there. I just prefer to see layers as I'm working. Um, be able to select them, group them, rename them, all the things we're going to do with them. Um, I don't like having three sections here. I like having one or two sections. So I'm going to put brush up next to strokes, quick effects, put next to brushes. And styles I don't use too often. I do use them, but oops, I unanchored transform. That's not what I wanted. Styles. I'm trying to get styles. Um, I do use them. They're fun to create. I don't use them enough to keep them there all the time. They're, I'll bring them up temporarily and then I'll get rid of them. Um, also, Navigator. My, I'm on a giant screen. I don't tend to need Navigator. If you're on a small screen, Navigator might be helpful. I don't, I don't need it. Um, and History. If I need to know my history, I'll just open the History Studio panel. Do what I need to do and close it. So I, I don't want it on the desktop. But transform, I love. I love it so much. I stick it right, right there. So it's like super handy. Um, I like it right next to my color wheel and my swatches. So right there, because I'm constantly using it to get things to be the size I want or to position it in the artboard at a particular X and Y coordinate or to change the rotation. Sometimes I shear things, sometimes, um, but this just helps get precision down. You can do most of it with the mouse, but sometimes you want to, you know, like you're trying to rotate it and it's just like 19.2% um, rotated. So you can just come over here and go 20, you know, it's nice and easy. Um, and this here is linking so you can do things so that they're, um, Proportionate to each other, locked in proportion or not. Probably familiar with that from, um, you know, doing things in, in, even in PowerPoint and probably Canva's got it too. So that's fairly common, but just keep an eye on that icon. Um, and you can also note that you will override it through the mouse sometimes. So, uh, sometimes it's easier to type things in the transform panel manually then try to do it with the mouse I and mean, there's buttons you can hit on the keyboard to keep the proportions but sometimes you forget to hit the keyboard um, thing like the shift key or control key or alt key depends on what you're doing um, and you throw the dimensions off so you'll get to know the control Z key which is your um, undo they don't have a little back arrow it's been asked for. They keep ignoring us. It's been asked for since version 1.7. So you just have to get used to whoop, whoop, flip, um, undo, control Z. So that's one of the first things I had to learn in Affinity is control Z because I just, I always used arrow buttons. So, and if you're on the iPad, they actually have the arrow buttons because, uh, you know, there's not a quick keyboard thing. Or you can do t uh, the, um, finger uh, gestures on the iPad too. So anything more you need to know about moving studio panels around, closing them, grabbing new ones. What new ones do I actually want in here? Assets can be very, very helpful. Is there anything else that jumps out at me more so? Stock can sometimes be helpful, but I tend to get it in different ways. Uh, symbols is a lot of fun to play with. Um, symbols and assets. So, well, let's, let's add assets. So right now I just did this. It wants to 
put it there. I don't know why. I'm going to undock it. Um, and it's just a place where you can save things you use a lot, like logos and stuff. So I'm going to slide that over here. And somewhere along here, if I were to go up here, it turns blue. I'll let it go when it turns blue. Now I've got assets there. Maybe I'll throw symbols in there, too. They kind of, to me, oops. I'm trying to drag and hold, and it doesn't want them. Let's put it up first, and then I can move it. Now put symbols next to assets. To me, my brain says they alike each other. Uh, and at some point, we'll do training on that. Um, so that might be how you see my studio panels, but you'll always see my layers are over here. Um, that's probably the biggest thing that will be different. And then to change those, we'll go look at them. It's the same as in Publisher, but I just want to... Okay, so View, go to View, Customize Tools. And they've got all their shapes. There's the Cat tool. As far as I know, in order to add it, you, you just you can't put it in the flyout menu. I've tried hovering. It won't embed it in it, so... Eh, I don't know why they didn't just put it in there. I think it's just because because uh, they want you to get used to the interface and figuring out that you can change these things around. So, I don't know. But these are all the tools. I think by default they're all represented there, with the exception of the cat. Um, but you can slide things around. I, I, just as I went over very thoroughly in Publisher um, about how I use what I believe is this scrubby zoom setting in Preferences, it makes it so I don't need this and this. I don't need um, the view and the, and the zoom because my mouse wheel does it. I don't want extra tools in my toolbar that are unnecessary, but I do want my artboard tool. Um, sometimes it can be nice to break your artistic and frame text tools out individually. I do prefer it. But you can leave the flyout menu if you don't, you know, if you want them compacted together. Um, and then let's see, those are all fine. Shape builder goes with that. I might throw a little divider between those and the shape builder. Eh, you can always play around, and you know, I may change this. The next time you see it, you may go, oh, she changed it all around. It looks different. I use um, these things a lot, so I want to bring them up higher. I'm going to bring that up. I like my node tool. The pencil tool is awesome. That was in the old version. Have you seen some people say, I don't need the pencil tool. Just use the pen tool. I'm like, actually, it's really great to use the pencil. Um... Let's see, these are all for measuring. Air, measures area, that's new, and measuring tool. Okay, tool. I'll leave those all down there. This is kind of similar to the node tool. Um, but I might move the dropper up here and the style dropper up here. And then I might move this divider to maybe here. I don't know. I may change my mind, but for now, but play around. Just like put them in an order that seems cool to you. Um, and um, maybe I'll put that up there. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, just, just play around with them. I might change them. But now you know how I'll do that. You can catch up to me by... Uh, oops, I hit reset. Darn it. All right, I'm not going to do it again. I won't bore you with me doing that, but that's what happens. I hit reset, and I just undid what I just did. I have to do it again. Oh, well. Um, I'll do that on my own time. But that's that. Actually, it didn't totally default it, because the hand in the magnifying glass didn't come back. Huh. Maybe I had changed it around before. I don't know. Um, but... Suffice it to say, that's just how that all works. Um, I'm not sure that there's anything else. There are no studio panels in 
designer that's only in publishers so if you're in designer going where are my studio panels that's because it only works from publisher um, they're figuring that in publisher if you're designing like a big magazine spread or a you know a picture book or who knows what i'm thinking magazines uh, are most likely that you're going to want all of the tools you're putting photos in your magazine you might have some you know vector elements in there for the design and so they put that all in there um, but instead you're going to find that you've got a pixel persona so you can go from the designer which is vector based over to the pixel persona which is your um, photo equivalent you know most of the photo tools and then you've got an export persona so there's no access to publisher here but you do have some pixel persona some some of the photo things in there so if we click that toolbar changes the um, studio panels change it still keeps my layers panel in here but it undocked it but I can redock it um, so the tools change so that they're uh, raster based things so that's the pixel persona and then there's an export persona but so you can export it as different file types we can go over that another time but that's what that is so that's that's what you get here instead of your studio links i may be calling them studio panels i do mean studio links some words are very similar to others so it's easy to say the wrong term um we'll go back over here i think that's everything you need to know you know just throw something on the the artboard if you want to make a second artboard just trick it out oh we're going to show you we'll go over i'll go into preferences here because i they may there may be some differences for um designer um but set up the scrubby zoom if it's not a default setting but you can go to artboard that just allows you similar to the move tool but the artboard lets you just draw another one there's snapping so i can doesn't really match it for that but this is where like i can look over here and go that nah, didn't get it quite 3000 and manually enter in that hit enter and now i have a perfect square so that's why you want transform really handy close by because uh if you're trying to make new artboards you know it it'll snap to one direction but it won't tell you you can try to read the little thing on the side but it's very hard to get it exactly right so it's easier to just let it go hit 3000 not fiddle with it so but you can do that and then if you want to move the artboard you can just hit the move tool and now it can slide around and they do snap so if you want to line them back up you can do that if you want to duplicate it you can right click and uh, i don't have the duplicate i haven't figured out why they've got caught copy paste but they don't do duplicate but you go you can go over here on any of these and you can d duplicate there and then slide it over and then rename it as four get in the habit of renaming your layers i don't talk about that at all but i do in the tutorials the guided sessions there are four artboards do some artboards and uh, play around with some shapes throw a shape on there change the color of the shape make it red see what it looks like with a line if you don't see the line you might have to go to uh, a stroke and you might need to bump the stroke up but play last time i did something with tables i don't know how useful that was and but yeah throw a shape on it and just play we'll go into more things with what to do but this is to get you familiar with the interface. So hopefully I covered what you need to know. If you didn't see it here, make sure you watch the one for publisher. And if it, and I'll be making the one for photo. There's so much overlap. If you've watched the one for publisher, designer, and photo, and I still miss something that you want to know that seems like it would be about the interface. I mean, there's just so many things here. Um, uh, let me know, and I'll add on to these um intro videos to catch the things that i i just forgot about so and there's probably somebody who knows something i don't yet know even though i've been using it for two years and it might have been in version 110 and i didn't know it so i don't know everything but i know a lot of things 
know, my goal is to know more than you so I can teach it to you and you can learn. We all grow together that way. All right, I'm going to end this video and then I'm going to move on to photo for a third video.